my name is Claudia and I'm here in the Hall of Flame Museum of Firefighting, the world's largest firefighting museum here in Phoenix, Arizona. Welcome to Storytime and today we're going to be reading Pink Fire Trucks by Gladys Elizabeth Barbieri. Excitement is buzzing in the air of the auditorium. The school principal taps the microphone and says, Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to career day. All sorts of people come to talk about their careers. An attorney, a carpenter, a yoga instructor, and a chiropractor, just to mention a few. Even Millie's dad comes. But instead of talking about being a painter, Mr. Vasquez rambles on and on about other things. On Fien, always use primer before you paint. Warm up your car in the morning for at least 10 minutes and always keep a spare key in your wallet, just in case. Not understanding what Mr. Vasquez is talking about, we laugh so loudly that the principal walks out on stage to remind us to simmer down. I look over at Millie and wonder if she's pretending to be invisible. My favorite guest is Mrs. Rizzo, a hairstylist from New Jersey. I wonder, can she do something with my not so fabulous bowl cut hairdo? Back in the classroom, the teacher hands us each a big piece of white paper and says, draw what you would like to be when you grow up. Enthusiastically, I begin to draw. As I finish my picture, Rudy looks at my drawing and hollers, Gladys, you can't be a fireman, get it? Fire man, not fire girl. I can be whatever I wanna be, I explain. Whatever, Rudy huffs. Why don't you just stick to a girl job? A girl job. Feeling irritated, I just want to hide and pretend to be invisible. Marilyn Jane, my best friend in the whole wide world, chimes in and says, girls can do whatever boys can do. During recess, the debate continues. The boys huddle on one side of the playground while the girls huddle on the other side. With my brave hat on, I look Rudy straight in the eye. I take several deep breaths, just like the yoga instructor taught us, and I visualize myself driving a pink fire truck. And then I wait. Feeling inspired, I shout at the top of my lungs, my daddy says I can be whatever I want to be. Marilyn Jane shouts, I'm going to be a race car driver. Nikki shouts, I'm going to be an astronaut. Millie then shouts something unprecedented. I'm going to be the first girl president of the United States of America. The girls cheer with excitement while Rudy and the boys are Speechless. For the next few days at school, things are pretty quiet. Then one miraculous day, the teacher announces that we're going on a walking field trip to the local fire station. Yahoo! I shout with joy. On the day of the field trip, I wear my favorite pink ballerina outfit. Rudy grunts, you can't wear that to a fire station. Feeling silly, I pretend to be invisible. When we get to the fire station, a woman welcomes us. Good morning, I'm Captain Beth. Welcome to station 41. Wow, a woman fireman, I said in wonder. Firefighter, she corrects. A firefighter can be a woman or a man. Hearing this news, I slowly turn and look back at Rudy and silently gloat. Next, firefighter Anthony gives us a tour of the fire station and I am full of questions. Excuse me, sir, where's the pole to slide down? Oh, this station doesn't have a pole because it's a single-story building. Isn't that like false advertising, I question. Then I ask, can fire trucks be pink? Firefighter Anthony chuckles and says, actually, no. Fire trucks are usually red. Some fire departments have yellow or white fire trucks, but not pink. With much confidence, I say, not yet anyways, but just wait till I grow up. After the tour, we each get a firefighter hat, a fire safety coloring book, and a sticker badge. This was truly a spectacular day. When I get home from school, I tell my little sister all about my day at the fire station. All of a sudden, I hear a loud crash. I look out the window and see Rudy crying on the sidewalk. With my paramedic kit in hand, I run out the door to check out the situation. I put a band-aid on Rudy's scraped knee and say to him what my mom always says to me whenever I get hurt. Sana, sana, colita de rana, sino sana hoy, se sanara mañana. 
Rudy sheepishly whispers, Thanks, Gladys, but, uh, you're not going to tell anyone that I was crying, are you? Of course not. Your secret is safe with me. As they help Rudy get up, he says, You know, perhaps having a girl firefighter isn't so bad after all. The end. Thank you for watching this video. If you like more story time videos, be sure to give us a like and subscribe. And again, we're here at the Hall of Flame Museum in Phoenix, Arizona. Bye! <laughs> Thank you.